We are going to keep moving through our data analysis and statistics to look at the second set of displaying our data. These are going to be older um, for older students in elementary courses, but they're also additional ways to broaden what we're teaching our students and to find different ways to do things. So we're going to talk about line graphs, scatter plots, the relationship between variables, a trend line, association, and then how to choose a good data display. Now, a line graph typically shows a trend over a period of time. So when we're teaching our students about line graphs, that is a key thing we're looking for. Time is usually marked horizontally, with the variable being considered on the vertical axis. Consecutive data points are connected by line segments. So this would be an example of a line graph. It gives us nice continuous data. It's continuous because the line keeps going over the course of the entire graph. There's no gaps or jumps that happen in data. All the data examined have been discrete data. Discrete data being data that has a concrete value, 23, 24, it's a whole number. Scatter plots show a relationship between variables that cannot be easily depicted by a line. So we use a scatter plot because the data points are too clustered almost in a scatter plot to show that. So if you look at this, see how clustered this is? Trying to connect these dots would be very difficult. So this is when we might choose a scatter plot. So scatter point shows the relationship here between the number of hours studied and a quiz score. So notice when I'm looking at a line graph, it's over time, but now that I have two different variables, it's gonna be a scatter plot and it's not occurring over time. A trend line is drawn through the center of the cluster. So I'm trying to hit as many of those points as possible. A trend line closely fits the data and can be used to describe it. So I can use this line to make predictions. So if I look at this line and I look at the data, it looks like the more that it, they study, the higher the quiz score, which probably makes sense. If a trend line moves up from the left to the right, we say there's a positive association, which means as one variable increases, the other does too. So here, as our studied increases, the quiz score also increases. If there is a negative association, that means that as that horizontal axis increases, the vertical one decreases. So it's an inverse relationship in that way. Sometimes our data isn't clustered at all and just looks like random points. And in that case, we say that there's no association and I can't predict anything because it's too random and sporadic. Double line graphs can be used together to demonstrate different sets of data where comparisons might be made. So maybe if I have two comparisons over time, I would use a double line graph to show what's happening to that data over the period of time. When we're choosing a data display, it's not always an easy thing to teach students because there might be more than one appropriate choice, but there might be one that's better than another. So here's breaking it down. A bar graph is used when I have grouped categories, not numbers, so categories. A histogram is used when data are number values with a clear order. So one thing has to come before another and it can be put into order. A stem and leaf plot is used when each value in a data set can be put into values of intervals. A scatter plot is used to show when I have two different variables where one isn't over a period of time. A line graph is going to be used when I have that variable over a period of time. And then a circle graph or a pie chart is going to be used with percentages, parts of a whole.